This video is about fountain pen friendly Japanese paper. Honestly, it's about paper, not just me playing around with ink. The first paper I'm going to review is a Tomoa River uh, Seven Seas Crossfield Notebook. I really didn't want to review Tomoa River because uh, most people know a lot about it, but I figured it might be a nice benchmark for the rest of the uh, paper that I'm going to review. When I first moved to Tokyo about four years ago, Tomoa River journals were kind of hard to come by. And so um, Seven Seas makes their Tomoa River journals here in Japan and they ship it to the States and then Nanami Paper sells it there in the States. And I would actually order it from the States to be shipped back to Tokyo. So before I could use my notebooks, um, they had to cross the ocean twice. But now Nanami Seven Seas um, offers a Tomoa River notebook here in Japan. It's called the uh, Seven Seas Crossfield and it comes with its ubiquitous um, blotting paper. I believe it comes in a blank and then seven millimeter squares. Tomoa River is not as ubiquitous as you would think it would be here in Japan. When I went to the Inkanuma or the Ink Swamp this past summer, um, Sakaya TP Paper was really pushing Tomoa River and they had um, these pads and these notebooks for sale and a bunch of other loose Tomoa River paper. And they were also giving out these free like little cut up pieces of um, Tomoa River for people to sample. And as I was filming the um, ink show, I was standing over by the Tomoe River uh, table and I can't tell you how many times somebody would come up in Japanese and say, well, what is Tomoe River? And it really surprised me. To standardize this paper test, I figured I need to use the same ink. So I needed a lot of ink. So Ackerman to the rescue. I'm using the Dutch Masters Color Collection Israel Zeblau. During my ink fun, I mean, I mean the ink test on the paper, I uh, discovered something interesting about the Ackerman bottles. I had always assumed they were like a laminate bottle with the marble that needed to be balanced right in between the neck of the bottle and the opening so that ink could flow in. That was not the case. That sucker just flew out of the bottle and then bounced around inside the glass. I guess that makes sense because the bottle is always going to be capped when you pour ink into the upper part of it. It's not like you're going to drink the ink or anything. I think. Now back to the Tomoa River paper review. I tried to keep the ink test pretty basic so for the fine and medium nibs I was looking at whether or not it hit dry within five seconds and when the 1.1 stub nib and the uh, Pilot FA nib which both laid down a lot of ink I, I tried to take a look to see if it took longer than 10 seconds. In general, the fine and medium nib took less than 5 seconds to dry, and the 1.1 and the FA nib took longer than 10 seconds to dry. Here's a swipe with a cotton swab, and then I did kind of a circle with a paintbrush. Sheen shows up on both of them. And the part that most people don't like is the show through on the back side of the paper. That doesn't really bother me that much. Um, you can see there's a little bit of bleed through in both the cotton swab and the uh, paintbrush. And the splotch test is as per usual for my ink test. You can see a lot of the sheen that shows up on this Tomoe River paper. Next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about Yamamoto Paper's fountain pen friendly paper collection. I talked about it a little bit on my uh, Tokyo International Pen Show video. But why I wanted to bring it up now is that um, I just saw that Jet Pens will start carrying this, I think, pretty soon. It is a collection of 18 different kinds of paper. And for instance, here on the first one, you see that it's View Corona for pocketbook paper. It's made by OGF Tex Company Limited. It's 52 grams per square meter. And then it talks a little bit about the history of the paper in Japanese and in English. And then they have five sheets of that kind of paper. They have both uh, white and cream colored Tomoe River paper. And here they talk a little bit about how Tomoe River paper is going to be shutting down one of their factories. I don't know if Jet Pens will be doing it, but when you buy paper from Yamamoto, they give you these little line guides you can put back behind your paper to use to guide your writing. But if you like a particular kind of paper, you can buy that paper. For instance, I like the OK Fool's Cap, and I bought some of that paper. So I don't know if Jet Pens will be um, doing that also, offering the paper. 
As an aside, these little plastic boxes are really handy. I haven't lived in the U.S. mainland in over 20 years, so I don't know if they sell them at the dollar store, but in Hawaii and in Japan, if you go to Daiso or to the 100 yen store, you can get these uh, plastic box boxes, and they come in standard paper sizes, and then you can store your paper, and it really protects the edges and stuff. There's two papers I'd like to highlight. The first is Glassine made by Nippon Paper Industries. And as you can see here, it really just kind of bled through. But it's an interesting vellum kind of paper. And I found it to be um, really cool that you could actually write on this. It took less than five seconds for the fine and medium nib to dry. And then on the 1.1 and Pilot FA nib, I was really surprised. It was just a little bit over 10 seconds. It says in the description that it takes longer to dry, but I did not find that to be the case, but instead it bled through a lot. Maybe that's the reason why it dried so fast. Neither the cotton swab or the paintbrush showed any kind of sheen, but it did wrinkle up a whole lot wherever I had a lot of ink laid down. And you can really see it on my handprint test. It just went right through and wrinkled up in the same as the splotch test. There's no sheen or anything. It just kind of goes right through. This paper may be useful for like craftspeople or artists. Another paper I want to highlight is the Colored Wood-Free Paper Black by Nippon Paper Industries. You basically write on it and then it shows different elements of ink that doesn't normally show up on white paper. For instance, here on the 6.0 with the Israel Zeblau, a little bit of pink shows up. For the most part, it's just yellow that kind of shows up with the different kinds of ink. Again, I want to make another plug for a Sito cleaning paper made by Kobeha. I talked a little bit about this on the Tokyo International Pen Show video. It's perforated here and then like has a pre-crease there. You tear it off at the perforation and then bend it at the pre-crease and kind of tent it like that. And where you might get a little bit of ink in the section there, you can use it to kind of clean up. You can kind of um, see that it's already starting to come off onto the paper. And then you can draw the paper up to clean off nib creep. Now I like the nib creep. I think it reminds me that I'm using a fountain pen, but I got kind of obsessive when I started using this. Here you can see I've got this stone box that's made out of uh, Laguna Lace agate. And inside I've got these all pre-torn, ready to go so I can indulge in my obsession. Next up is Takegami 100 Notebook. It's made of 100% bamboo and made in Japan. It has a nice feel to it, maybe just a little bit rougher than a Tomoa River. It's a very fast drying paper and both the fine and medium nib, less than five seconds, really quick. But where I was really surprised is on the 1.1 and the Pilot FA, both of them are kind of gushers and lay down a lot of ink. At the end of timing, I used this Tomoa River blotting paper. And when I blotted it, it just hardly took up any ink at all because it, drew, it dried right like just a little bit after 10 seconds. So a little bit of shading in the 3.8 parallel and no sheening even in the um, paintbrush circle. There's a slight bit of show through on the back side, especially with the fine and the medium nib, and really no bleed through other than just the paintbrush. The splotch test and the handprint test, though I pulled a lot of ink, really didn't show any sheen, maybe just a very slight amount. This is just a really good, quick drying, fountain pen friendly paper. Next up is Nemosyne or Nemosyne, whatever way you want to call it. I wanted to highlight this because of the special edition they come out with every once in a while. This is the Creators Limited Edition by Ko Machiyama, and it feels really nice because it's a very coated paper. Jet Pens carries the standard version. I don't typically like spiral bound notebooks, but all of these pages are perforated so that you can fold it down and tear off the ragged edge. After doing so many ink splotch tests and hand slap tests, um, I really appreciate paper that you can tear out very easily. These come in various sizes, including a very small mini one. Now that I'm used to Tomoa River, this paper seems just a little bit too coated for me and so when I write with a fine nib, I feel like I'm dragging across the paper a little bit. The fine and medium nib came out just fine with drying in less than 5 seconds and then the 1.1 stub and the FA nib was longer than 10 seconds. The cotton swab showed a little bit of sheen along with the 3.8 and just a real little bit in the bottom of the 6.0 parallel and on the paintbrush circle. Very light amount of show through in the fine Aminian nib, mostly just with the larger uh, bouts of ink. Of course, there was no bleed through at all. And on the splotch test, you can start to see some of the sheen, and the same as on the handprint test. Next up is a notebook called Section, and it's by Tsubame. The fine and medium nib dried in less than five seconds, and the 1.1 and FA nibs 
uh, took longer than 10 seconds to dry. The Q-tip swab started to show some sheen along with the 6.0 and a lot on the um, paintbrush circle. Where this really shines is the show through. There's hardly any show through at all on the, on the uh, nibs and just a little bit on the darker bouts of ink. Let's compare it with Tomoa River. As you can see in the Tomoa River is a whole lot more um, show through. On the splotch test you can see it really starts to show a lot of sheen. What makes this notebook a real standout is that it's fairly inexpensive. I bought this at a grocery store. Look for a picture of a swallow or a bird on the back side. So this is a nice inexpensive sheening notebook that you can purchase while you're in Japan. Next up is what's called Stology. I think it's called Stology. It's supposed to be a combination of stationary standard and technology. It's really nice because up on the top um, of the uh, notebook, it's got like the months and dates. So you can either highlight them or circle them and you can turn this into like a planner or you could just ignore it because it's very faint and just use this as a journal. But what I'll be testing today is the Stology flat pad. I kind of wish I had tested the notebook because the notebook looks like it has less bleed through than the paper in this pad. The paper tears out nice and easily and it's a, a slightly coated paper but maybe a little bit thinner than the Mnemosyne. It's a fairly fast drying uh, paper. The uh, fine and medium nib dry within 5 seconds and the 1.1 uh, stub in the FA ended up drying right about at 10 seconds. It was pretty fast. It dried so fast that in the Q-tip swab a swipe there, the 3.8, and in the um, paintbrush circle, there was just no sheen. It just pooled up and shaded, but no sheen. Because the paper sucked up that ink so fast, from the 1.1 on down, there was a slight amount of bleed through. Not any on the fine or the medium, but on the heavier ink, there was a little bit of bleed through. And like I said earlier, off camera, I did try the notebook, and the notebook did not have any bleed through at all, even with a 3.8 parallel. On both the splotch and the hand print, there was just no sheen at all. It just dried so fast. You can get the Stology line at Jet Pens. Next up is Lysio paper. It's made by the same company, Kobeha, as the Suito cleaning paper in Grafilo. I wanted to highlight this uh, paper because Daryl from Musubi said it's the best paper ever. Apparently there's some sort of old-fashioned machine that makes this and once it breaks they can't make this paper anymore, which sounds like a pretty good marketing thing to me. It's a fast drying paper, both a fine and medium nib dried in less than 5 seconds and both the 1.1 uh, and the FA nib actually dried right about at 10 seconds which was really fast for how much ink um, I laid down. It dried so fast that the cotton swab 3.8, 6.0 didn't show any sheen, maybe just a little bit on the paintbrush circle, but um, also on the uh, splotch test, um, no sheen, and on the handprint test, really no sheen. On the back side, there was no bleed through and very little show through. I was quite um, impressed with that. This is a nice, fast drying paper. Um, you might want to check it out if you get your hands on some. Next up is Kunisawa's Fine Notebook Soft. It's a soft cover version of their I Do Not Seek, I Find hard um, cover notebook. It's a five millimeter graph cream colored paper notebook. The only con for this notebook is in order to get it to lay flat, you've got to really crank down on it. And then once you have, it will lay flat. It kind of has this rubberized feeling cloth cover. And what I like about this notebook is that it's actually made in Tokyo and for sentimental reasons, I like that. It's a fairly fast drying paper. It's less than five seconds in the fine and the medium and right at about 10 seconds for the 1.1 and the FA nib. There's a little bit of sheen on the paintbrush circle and there really isn't much show through on the backside. And here it is compared to Tomoa River. You can really see that the show through is far less. There's very little sheen on the splotch test and none at all on the hand slap test. Besides purchasing it here in Tokyo, you can also buy it from a website called inkandvolt.com. Next up is Kobeha's Ciro paper. I use Kobeha's Grafilo paper for all my ink reviews. I prefer to use Tomoa River and um, Grafilo paper as they both show sheen really well. Both Kobeha's Ciro paper and Grafilo paper are for sale um, 
on jet pens. I had a little bit of an ink accident there on the bottom and um, both of these notebooks now come with their Aceto blotting paper and as you can see it blots up ink really well. This paper looks blank but it has very faint lines to use as a guide, I'll show you later. It dries in less than 5 seconds for a fine and medium nib but as you get on toward the 1.1 and the FA it takes a lot longer. Because it does take longer and it is made by Kobeha, the sheen shows up really well especially on this paintbrush and on the Q-tip swab. As far as on the backside show through, it's not as bad as Tomoa River. You do have some. So if you like a, a really sheening paper, um, and, and Tomoa River seems a little bit too thin for you, the Ciro paper and the Grafilo paper are a little bit thicker, and the dry times are just a little bit faster, but it still shows a lot of sheen. On the splotch test, you can see a lot of sheen, and even on the handprint, a lot of sheen, along with the guidelines that I had talked about earlier. If you want a real sheening paper that's a little bit thicker than Tomoa River, Grafilo and the Ciro paper might work for you. Next up is just kind of a generic notebook that I bought at a Gustav Klimt showing at the Wayno Parks Museum of Art. I want to illustrate that if you buy paper in Japan, it's probably going to be fountain pen friendly. None of the paper I reviewed today had any problems with feathering, including this paper. So if you go to an art show or you go to Disney or Hello Kitty, feel free to buy the, the paper. It'll be probably be fountain pen friendly. At the show, I bought this notebook along with these pads of paper. I use them for like um, stationery or to write little notes on. Pretty much the only paper I've ever had any problem with in Japan has been Moleskine and uh, Mont Blanc. Both of them feathered really terribly. But other than that, I would say you pretty much well can count on most paper being fountain pen friendly. This is a fairly fast drying paper of less than 5 seconds for the fine and medium. And then pretty fast for the 1.1 and the FA, they only took about 10 seconds. As a result for being so fast drying, there really wasn't any shading. But there is no um, show through on the back side here. We can compare it with the uh, Tomoa River. There's just some bleed through with the heavier application of ink. So pretty much what well, my motto is, when in Japan, buy the paper, buy all the paper. I hope this rather unscientific review of paper has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you're interested in seeing videos about fountain pens, inks, or Asia, I post every Friday night, Tokyo time.